conjunction with the AU mission in Washington has co-sponsored two diaspora business conferences. The first at the AU mission in Washington in November, 2018, and the second in Baltimore, Maryland in February of this year. At the Baltimore conference, AU officials and several African embassies presented tremendous procurement opportunities to a gathering of more than 200 mostly diaspora participants. In order to facilitate the process of connecting the diaspora and Africa business communities, it was suggested by the AU through both the Commission on Trade and Industry and the Citizens and Diaspora Directorate that there should be two teleconference engagements. The first would be with US government entities that have focused uh, on the diaspora, such as the USAID, of course, the US Department of Commerce, specifically the Minority Business Development Agency, the State Department, the Small Business Administration, and the US African Development Foundation. The second teleconference would be with diaspora business organizations. The USAID Africa Bureau has identified and communicated with 16 diaspora business organizations, and this list has been shared with the Commerce Department. USAID handles the international part of the diaspora Africa business linkage, while commerce handles the domestic portion. In the past, the US government has tried to link small and medium enterprises in Africa with large US retailers such as JCPenney. But a better match would be with the African uh, stores located in most malls in America that sell Africa clothing, foodstuffs, and artifacts every day. By identifying and aggregating these US buyers, African producers can not only more successfully target their production to consistent buyers, but they can scale up or down the number of US clients based on their production capacity. And conversely, these US buyers can shop among producers to identify the products they want in the quantities and at the prices they want. By sending goods to already identified buyers, prices to US consumers could be reduced since the buyers wouldn't have to cover transportation costs uh, to purchase the goods in country and producers wouldn't have to fear perishable goods, not making it to market promptly or non-perishable goods sitting at the port for an extended period of time. This will be critically important in the post-pandemic era as new value chains are being established. USAID also is working with the Young African Leaders Initiative, also established in 2010. YALI is a signature effort by the US government to invest in the next generation of African leaders as they catalyze change in their communities, country, and continent. YALI consists of three programs designed to identify potential in and empower young people ages 18 to 35 from diverse backgrounds across the continent. The YALI Mandela Washington Fellowship, the online YALI Network, and the four YALI regional leadership centers based in Ghana, Kenya, Senegal, and South Africa. The YALI regional leadership centers and Mandela Washington Fellowship programs provide experiential leadership training, support to build and expand networks, and encourage young Africans to harness their leadership potential in three distinct, distinct tracks, business and entrepreneurship, civic leadership, and public management. USAID manages two YALI activities, the on-continent professional development and grant opportunities for Mandela Washington Fellows after their six-week leadership training in the United States, and establishment and management of the four uh, regional leadership centers that are embedded in institutes of higher education. The RLCs also leverage resources from the private sector, including US and African country companies. Through public-private partnerships, the model calls for the RLCs to become independent entities in the next few years. More than 20,000 people have graduated through the Mandela Washington Fellowship and the Regional Learning Center programs to date, and more than 650,000 members belong to the YALI Network, the virtual online community. Even with the significant economic trends on the African continent, there's room for growth and more partnerships between the U.S. and African uh, uh, the African continent. However, the gap in information for international investors remains one of the principal barriers to large-scale private capital flows into sub-Saharan Africa. This is especially true 
for U.S. companies. Maintaining an engaged collaborative YALI alumni network is therefore crucial to addressing these barriers. The business environment in Africa is generally unknown to U.S. companies and tools available to support businesses are not well coordinated across the U.S. government. U.S. business groups such as the President's Advisory Council on Doing Business in Africa understand the value proposition of YALI and want to find ways to incorporate the YALI private sector graduates in their operations as consultants, subcontractors, or employees. One of YALI's most significant impacts has been the multiplier effect, resulting from alumni returning to their communities, sharing knowledge, and espousing American values of community service and ethical leadership. YALI alumni have the capacity to create opportunities for Africans and business, U.S. businesses by establishing a transfer of skills, knowledge, and helping create new opportunities for collaboration and partnerships. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought economic havoc to Africa. A spring report from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa estimated that the continent could lose up to 1.4 percentage points of GDP growth as a result of the pandemic. Perhaps a much too conservative figure, given the massive destruction of trade and economic activity around the world. Already hit by the crash in oil prices, African countries, including Angola and Nigeria, that heavily depend on the export of oil, could together lose up to $65 billion in income. Additional health spending on the pandemic is expected to reach $10.6 billion across Africa. South Africa, an African economic powerhouse, has experienced an unemployment rate of 29%. And the lockdown the government has instituted to fight the virus spread was expected to significantly harm workers. Overall, there's an estimate that Africa could face job losses as high as 20 million dollars, uh, uh, rather 20 million people. Furthermore, the drop in imports due to the closure of borders and cancellation of flights, as well as the resulting shortages of these actions have caused, led to a spike in inflation in Ghana shortages of some basic consumer goods imported from China have led to price spikes exceeding 100% for some products, including food. Such shortages could have even more dire results in terms of disorder if they increase. In conclusion, none of us interested in the progress of Africa can afford to wait out the pandemic. USAID and our sister agencies in the US federal government have not been standing by. We look to continued partnership with African governments and private sectors to minimize the damage caused by the pandemic and accelerate the recovery of the continent once it has ended. Thank you very much. You're still muted, Eric. Thank you.